Today, I'm going to show you how I run Kingmaker in Foundry V2T. I've run a bunch of Kingmakers throughout these last few years, and even though a couple have fallen apart, I've done the first few chapters enough times to show you how to do it. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up Kingmaker for Foundry V2T, as well as all the modules that I use and everything you need to do to set them up. If you want to know whether you want to run Kingmaker or not, check the video out here, because I've reviewed the Kingmaker module before. I also give GM tips in this video, so check it out if you want more generalized advice. Advice. Remember to like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get started with the Kingmaker module itself. Once you've imported the Kingmaker module, the biggest thing that's different from any other premium modules is this Stolen Lands map. I'm going to show you how to configure and set up the Stolen Lands map properly so that you can run it in your games the same way that I do. First thing we want to do is go to the actors directory and assuming they start in Brevoy, put the party token there and then select it. You'll see the surrounding tiles all highlighted and that's sort of revealing the map to them. But I don't like the player character seeing surrounding hexes, so we're gonna change a quick setting. We're gonna go to configure settings and then pathfinder kingmaker settings and then change that to limited single hex. Then we can just reset the fog of war on the left and click the button and that way they can only see the hex they're in. It's my preferred way of doing things and if you don't like it, at least you know this setting exists in setting. The next thing I wanna show you is the unique controls for the stone lands. Here on the left side, you'll see toggle hex controls. If you select that, it'll tell you all about the hexes. Look at that open terrain planes and if they have any special landmarks on them for example the other control is toggle zone boundaries which might get annoying if you keep them on but it's useful to know which zone is which by selecting this button right here now here's what i like to change about this stolen lands map and you might like to do this too if you want a little bit of just immersion and fun for your player character all these icons on the map that are shown right here will not be seen by your player characters and they shouldn't be seen by your player characters Characters. This is what the map looks like, for example, from a player's point of view. Unless you reveal it to them as a GM, which I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right, let's assume your player characters make their way to Novoctis Crossing after Chapter 1. The first thing that bothers me is that it looks like a mountain, doesn't it? We're going to go ahead and change the mountain icon to a small village icon by going to the left, clicking on Journal Notes, double right clicking on that mountain there, and then selecting Village from the Entry icon we see over here. Doesn't that look way better? Better. You can do this with every single journal entry that doesn't seem to have the correct icon on them. And you can even add custom icons by going to custom, selecting a custom icon, going to core data, icons, and like for the spider fields, we can do spiders. Trigger warning if you hate spiders. Look at that. Now this is how you reveal an icon to a player character who's reconnoitred or explored the hex. Reconnoiter? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Going back to Novoctis Crossing, this is an official journal entry from the module. Just right click on the Novoctis Crossing header, click on configure ownership, and then for all players, do limited. Now if I log in as a player's view, look at that. Player C Novoctis Crossing. I go, although I guess I forgot to show off rest off which you should do immediately as a player character start off there so just do the exact same thing i did with Novoctis crossing and bam there's rest off in the player's view something's bugging me about this map every time i refresh it seems to erase the progress in the fog of war it seems like the default fog of war system isn't perfectly configured and it's really annoying which leads me to my first module world explorer enable world explorer and let me show you how to use it go to the stolen lands configure first disable the token vision and fog exploration copy this fog of war image path with Control c on your keyboard go to the world explorer tab under the stone lance paste the overlay image as the same one and then enable the module to work on this scene also keep areas explored by tokens and we're going to go ahead and save changes you'll see a tab on the left side here which will show you the game master overlay capacity put that at maximum then clicking on this little toggle spaces button you can start manually revealing areas in the fog of war i personally use world explorer and i find it more intuitive and useful than the standard fog of war from the original ap your mileage may vary figure out which one you prefer but at least i gave you the options right all right the next module we're going to talk about is putty's kingmaker tools or as now it's called kingdom building camping and weather no more kingmaker in the name of the tools something about 
legal stuff. Who cares? This module is amazing and I find it impossible to run camping or kingdom building without. Also, if you get this screen and you're upgrading from an older version, I would recommend you read this first, like it says in big, bold letters. I also recommend you click on this button that says manual because it'll tell you how to use this module. Although I'm assuming you're watching me for a reason because you want me to show you how to use it, huh? Look, I'm going to give you a general overview of this module, but I'm not going to get into the fine details. So you're going to have to read. Let's go to the first part, which is the weather. And it's all automated. And I love the weather. Although some of my players really hate being fatigued in the rain. I, I, Scott. I would just recommend you find the manual page on the weather to get started here. You can also open settings for kingdom building, camping and weather. And there is a couple of toggles here. The enable weather toggle automates the weather. And then you can also have enable weather ambient sounds if you wanted to play a sort of playlist for weather there and automatically roll weather. We'll roll weather when a new day starts. All of these are useful if you want to automate weather. Also, really quickly, enable combat tracks might want to be disabled if you like putting your own battle music. You can also customize the climate. I don't necessarily have the months set up properly, but it tells you the DC for cold and the DC for weather. Uh, starting at, for example, in the fall, you get a precipitation DC of 15. You can change this around if you'd like. Now, the manual will give you some macros which you can put in your macro bar. First one is the roll weather macro. It'll just roll it automatically for you based on the DC that you set up in settings. Remember though that the settings have it roll automatically at the start of a new day. Second one is set current weather macro. If you just want the weather to be rainy, it's raining and it sounds like rain. The most important macro here though is toggle shelter from weather. Check this one out. Let's say it's raining out in the stone lands, but you're at the Eldori Manor. Since it looks like it's going to be raining inside, you can click on toggle shelter from weather and have it not rain indoors. You can also use regions to make sure the area is safe from weather. I might be doing a video on that later, so check it out if it's out. Also, don't forget to re-toggle shelter from weather if it's raining that day and you're outside. All right, that was the weather part of the module. Let me show you the camping, which is super important, especially in the early stages of Kingmaker. Let's say your party is out in the wilderness camping. Let's open up the camping macro. It's here at the top right, although you can drag it out to your macro bar. Clicking on it will pop this up. Oh, by the way, don't forget to hand this macro out to your players in case they ever need to reopen it. Here is a quick and easy way on how to use this macro. First, drag all your player characters from the party to the camping sheet. Then you have somebody who's trained in survival. Prepare the campsite as per the camping instructions in the Kingmaker game. All the rules for camping can be found in Archives of Nethys or in the Kingmaker Companion Guide. Don't forget to set your zone. These zones aren't named. You can rename them in settings. The regions don't have official names due to copyright stuff, but you can just quickly go to the right tab Tab, for example, the random encounter tab, find which zone corresponds to which name, and then quickly just rename zone 01, for example, to Rosslyn Hitlands, or I just call it RH, etc, etc. Don't forget to save at the bottom and wait a second after you save, because it takes a while for it to save. After which, just drag and drop people. But then I realize Amiri is not stealthy enough to camouflage the campsite. But what if she really wants to? You can go to settings here on the right, and there is a toggle that says do not validate activity activity skill proficiency. I would also suggest the party to gather to add ingredients to hunt and gather. You can also mess with some other settings like always perform activities. These are the NPCs that usually give you these skills. You can always have those enabled. And there are some other settings here, like for example, a resting playlist, which is pretty cool. And yeah, the random encounter during rest, keep that at one. And you can skip people's watches and I'll show you how the watches work in a second here. Also, there's a couple of other settings I'm going to show you because they will go unnoticed unless I highlight them to you. So let's check them out really quickly. We can set favorite meals. If your party has favorite meals, we can add activities based on the NPCs that teach you them. For example, if you talk to, I think it's Jaythal, she'll teach you Undead Guardians. There you go. Oh, and you can add a custom activity. Recipes is the same. You can, if you discover a recipe out of the discover special meal area, you can you can add it from here. And then this is the region setting we talked about earlier. Oh yeah, the help setting is there in case this video wasn't instructive enough. Definitely watch, read this, please. Please read this. Right, we're gonna wrap up camping here. Let's have Ezra and Cook. Let's have Amiri Hunt and Gather and Kyra tell a campfire story. Have each player character roll their own stuff. This will add automatically by clicking on add and it'll, since we set it to the party sheet, it'll add to the party sheet. And yeah, next tab, cook meal. Go ahead and drag everybody to the meal they want to consume. For example, I want everybody to have a basic meal 
Now, uh, Ezrin's not very good at cooking, so I'm gonna fumble his rolls for a little bit here, but eventually he's gonna crit fail, which is what we want. We want a crit fail or a success, either way. Critical failure effect, you can, it'll automatically apply the effect on your player characters. As you can see, Amiri right now has a basic meal critical failure, second one. This is a really cool module, and I like the automation for the camping and everything. Thank you, Putty, for making this. Last thing I'm gonna show you is the rest for the night button. This will advance time automatically, and we can either roll random encounter or check for random encounter. The check for random encounter will do a flat check, which in this case, Rosso Hindlin was 12, and we didn't really camouflage the camp. So yeah, we got, we got three bandits, and I'll link you the actor right here and everything. Beautiful. For a random encounter map for camping, I usually have a specialized camping map with 10 and everything. Let me link it to you in the description below. It looks like this. Thank you, Jack, for making it. It's really, really cool. Lastly, I'm gonna give you a quick glance at the Kingdom Sheet. Now, this Kingdom Sheet from Putty's module is way better than the official one that they give you included, and I recommend you use this. I'm not gonna give you a thorough overview because I don't use Kingdom stuff anymore. I explain why in my other Kingmaker video, which I've already linked earlier in the video. Definitely watch that because I also give more GM tips and tricks. But just to quickly show you how Kingdom stuff or work kingdom stuff is click on pfrpg to we kingdom stuff you can you can set this up i'm not going to give you a thorough overview but definitely go to help here and it'll teach you everything about kingdom it does have vance and karen shara integration which is wonderful it's even got the new 1.1 edition which is great you're gonna have to mess with this i'm not gonna do a thorough overview of this i am so sorry i just genuinely don't like kingdom building but when i did use it it's a great system it's automated it's perfect it's wonderful thank you putty for making this it's way better than the official module one you guys really do want me to make it though i can just send a message in the comments below hey show me how to use the kingdom stuff and i'll do a whole other video on it It'll be linked here if I do do it. In fact, being perfectly honest here, I didn't know what else to put in this video, but I think you, the viewer, might have a lot of questions on how do I do this in Kingmaker? How do I do that in Kingmaker? I'm happy to make a part two with your frequently asked questions because I think I gave you what I thought was important, but I might be blind to my own experience. So ask me questions in the comments below and I will make a part two of what you think that I should teach you what is important. All right, thanks for watching, like, and subscribe. Watch this video.